Man! That's how I want to start this one out. Back row ministry, the world premiere. Man! I have never seen a person renege this much since I played a game of spades with some of my friends. You know how people renege in um, spades? You know, I do a lot of reneging in spades. You renege. But not since spades have I seen so much reneging. We're in a script that's pretty much designed where one day you get this, the next day you get that. So the Trump separation script was, I didn't know it was bad to separate children from parents. Let me change the law. But this law was changed for a reason. And that's why I tell people that everything that the elite does is a calculated move. They'll make you think they're against something so they can establish or redo something. So a lot of people say, well, this law is old. It was on the books. Yet, this was a law that for the most part wasn't really being enforced. Wasn't really being enforced. You don't see a lot of people. Now, I'm in the New York, New Jersey area. Ice ain't rolling through New York, New Jersey separating uh, people from their children. It's not happening. But that's the way they want you to believe it's going down. Even in Houston, you go to Houston, you the people, you're not seeing that. Go out to Houston, you're not gonna see that. But they need you to believe that that's what's going on. They get the nation in an uproar and then they change this law. But the question should always be for those who don't ask any question is, why did they need to change this law? Why did they need to continue to rechange and rewrite immigration policy. Why is this big thing to make all these changes now? So the new policy is no more separation of children from parents. And if that's the case, then you know nobody's gonna be going anywhere. So if you're undocumented, and then we had this whole thing with the uh, the children of undocumented immigrants act that they were trying to pass. So if you're undocumented now and you have children here, we're right back to square one. The children stay and you stay. So it's like we just went in a full circle. So all this dreamers talk and dreamers act talk is now back on the table because now, you know, parents aren't, aren't gonna be going anywhere. It's not gonna be any separation. So what is the end game here? What is the in game to immigration law. What is it that they're trying to pass and why? And sometimes you got to look ahead. Got to look ahead because that's how these people pretty much operate. They operate from a game of Hey, can I get in? Thank you, brother. No, oh, go ahead and hit my car. I don't need it. Well, he's going to tear my car, but that's how Americans operate. It's all about them. But Looking at a point of what is the end game? Because the end game is not for anything in the next 10 years. This immigration game is for something 20 or 30 years in the works. And remember now, we got Trump jumping on TV talking about Space Force. Now all of a sudden we about to get the Starfleet going as they begin to prepare to go into outer space and they begin to travel space we talk about mars and i'm always one who say they've already been to mars it's just a matter of time before they will be offering jobs on mars and colonizing the place and a lot of people say man that's only on tv and blue 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 things are in the works years before they take place. That's just the way things are. Plans are putting together 10 years before you actually see a plan actually take effect. So they plan early. And this immigration bill has nothing to do with Hispanics and has nothing to do with uh, you know people from Europe that might be undocumented. This has to do with something that's 30 years in the works from now. And 
you set up a situation where when these immigrants come or these aliens come, there'll be no separation uh, from parents from, for those born here. And any of them born here will get certain rules under the Dreamers Act setting it up for what's to come and we not most of us might not see it most of us might be dead by the time that some of this happens or some of these changes we see the effects of these immigration changes because that has nothing to do with mexicans or anybody from south america this in my opinion are changes that are you know 30 to 40 years down the road a lot of us might you know might not see it might not see some of these changes but our children might see these changes and might remember when certain laws were passed or overturned to which made this possible which made it possible so these people prepare early they prepare early they use certain individuals to pass agendas and then they get the agendas in place for something they had planned way down the road i was i was watching an article today about uh, you can you can check it on YouTube. Cities they believe will be underwater, and they're not even saying they believe. They're saying these cities will be under the water by 2060 to 2100 at the latest. Now, why would they put that on there? And if you take 2060, you add it up. Uh, 2060, you get 80, and you get eight. In gematria, you take the, the zeros away. Uh, in numerology, you take the zeros away, you get the number eight, and you also get the number 80. Uh, eight spelled out in Jamantra equals 49. 49 is the number of revelation. So they they always tell you something early. So by the year 2100, they're saying out here where I stay, a lot of towns in New Jersey won't exist. Sakakis, for one, won't exist. It'll be totally underwater. And if you remember correctly, one thing they've been talking about for the longest, for the longest, is making a tunnel that goes from New Jersey, goes from New Jersey, which they have some tunnel, but we're talking about a longer tunnel that goes from inside of the inner parts of New Jersey, around the Newark area, into New York. Why would they want to do that? They already got two tunnels that do that. Unless they're expecting something to happen years down the road. And now you see this article about towns, and they have, you can look it up on YouTube, towns that they uh, are saying, are predicting, will be totally underwater due to sea level, due to flooding, they would be totally submerged in water. It won't exist anymore. They get wiped out by 2060 or 2100. So this is just them planning early. They plan or they tell you early what's going to take place. And it's like Ripley's Believe It or Not. And a lot of people don't believe it because that's just we're always designed not to believe. We have to see it. But the elite works on preparing those they want to have the information early so you can already start planning so in 2060 okay i'm not going to be staying in sakakis in 2060 because it's not going to exist so 2100 like i say a lot of us will be dead by then we won't feel these effects but a lot of our children will feel these effects so a lot of these changes in the immigration laws i believe have to do with things that are going to happen years down the road years down the road i mean right now america is one of the most diverse countries in the world there are more hispanic people uh in most of your major cities now they're really um blending into the uh urban urban communities they're blending into the uh the kind of that the construct of most of your urban environments now so it's very diverse nowadays. There's a lot of cities. You have Hispanic, you have Caucasian living together, you have African American living together. Very diverse. So, you know, political landscapes do change. Right now, Hispanics are in the driver's seat to obtain political power. And, you know, they're very intelligent. They uh, work together well and they support each other. You know, I mean, even with the different sets, the Mexicans, the Puerto Ricans, uh, those uh, Dominican speaking, Guatemalans, they find a way of Venezuelans, your Brazilians. The Brazilians is kind of hard due to the, the, the communication barriers with them speaking Portuguese. But they do find a way to get together and work towards a, a, a unified Hispanic 
Hispanic um, nation. And now they want political power. They want political power in some of these cities. So, you know, there could be a fear there. There could be a fear that they do get political power. But, I mean, this is just something that happens when society becomes more diverse. And those that fear it can fear it all day, but it's going to happen. Especially in a place like Houston and, you know, Houston, you know, you need to be fearing that. You need to be fearing that. But, I mean, look, look at the people that's in power right now. I mean, look at the people that's in power right now. Ted Cruz. I mean, come on. So, you already see where the pendulum of power is swinging. And I think that's the fear right now. So, a lot of these laws, in my opinion, are being passed for things not yet to come, but they're going to be in place. But when these things happen, that is going to cause issues in the society, but the laws are already going to be established. It's the Mockley Back Road Industry.